Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Dan Blondell from Nano One Materials. How are you today? Fantastic. Thanks very much for having me. Well, let's just start with congratulations. And your recent private placement was what? Oversubscribed by how much? So it was an $11 million private placement, oversubscribed by 80%. Uh, our first meeting out, we were already oversubscribed. It was, uh, it was amazing. Actually, the whole thing kind of unfolded over about a two-week period at, uh, at the beginning of February. So, of course, those of you out there that do private placements regularly know how exceptional this particular news is. So I have to ask, ask you, what sentiment drove this, or is it just because of you, Dan? Well, you know what? We we've done a, a fantastic job, I think, bringing Volkswagen and government funding into the into the into the company and uh, other partners, and that all happened in in basically a lull last year when it was just really hard to get a lot a lot of love for it. And uh, but what we saw right at the beginning of January was a change in the sentiment in the market towards uh, the whole ESG, you know, environmental, social, governance kind of investing, and and the clean technology space. And we happen to have a technology that's kind of focused on, of course, lithium-ion batteries, but it's also a clean technology. So uh, you know, we use uh, we don't have any waste streams or anything like that, and so it made, it's driven a, it drove a lot of that ESG sentiment our way. We sensed it right away at the beginning of January. We got a lead order in place from the from the from the UK, and that uh, that was two million dollars. And then uh, we had five the next day, and we had ten within a couple days, and we were over eleven by the time I had my first meeting. So, is this evidence that battery materials are back in? For sure. For sure. I mean, we've seen we've seen a we've seen a shift in the lithium uh, stocks. We've seen more kind of interest coming back into the market. I think everyone recognizes that electric vehicles are here to stay. When you see what Europe's doing with the kind of the, the mega factories they're putting into place, and the uh, and, and what we've see, what we're seeing kind of around the world, adoption wise, it's uh, it's stunning. So I think the world is realizing it. I went to a Christmas party this year, uh, and I couldn't I couldn't get out of the room without talking about uh, about uh, lithium ion batteries. This is with a group of friends who never asked me any of those questions. Before. So even like I think I see it, I see it really at a at a kind of grassroots level. Everyone's interested in, in electric cars. It's amazing. Yeah, but they're interested in electric cars, but they're also specifically interested in you and what you guys are up to. Can you talk to us about it, your most recent, you know, developments with your you know patents, for instance. So we we had a patent um, uh, come out in August. Uh, what we call our single crystal coated single crystal uh, nano crystal technology, and uh, really what that does is it's aimed at improving the longevity of the of the materials that go in the battery. If you can make the materials last longer and you make the battery last longer, it's got more durability. That gives the OEMs, the car manufacturers, more ability to charge it faster because charging charging damages the battery. So the faster you charge it, the the, the, the the bigger impact it has on durability. So if you can you can increase the durability, you give them more range to uh, to basically charge it faster and drive it further on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's really focused on, on uh, extending range and extending the, uh, uh, the charging rates. And of course, you're kind of becoming the rising, well, the rock star in the battery materials. Everyone wants to talk to you. I know Trudeau came out to your, your office last year. Can you tell us a little bit more about, you know, I mean, the Nobel Prize winner for battery materials last year uh, you have a relationship with, is that not correct? Yeah, so Dr. Stanley Whittingham, who I've met on a number of occasions, I had I was lucky enough to have dinner with him a couple weeks before he got the got the prize. Actually, very humble uh, and very obviously uh, a very influential man. He was here yesterday, actually in, in Toronto, and presenting at a uh, at a sort of battery materials uh, seminar uh, in town, and got to meet him again. Um, uh, he's uh, he's a, he's a, an amazing man, actually, and, and really a foundational part of the whole lithium ion battery space. And I was asking that question of warming up for the next one, which is, can you give us a little glimpse into what we might see here this year in 2020 in battery materials, some comments that you might share, for instance, at that dinner with your friends? Right, so so the $11 million we brought in actually also brought in another $500, uh, $5 million in, in government fund, uh, fi, uh, funding, and that's all non-dilutive. That gets us, you know, somewhere north of $16 million, really, in terms of our treasury, a three and a half year runway. But this year is all focused on execution. So it's about bringing, as I say, bringing Volkswagen into a deeper relationship, bringing possibly some of our other undisclosed partners, and they're all peers of Volkswagen, um, into the space and, and being able to announce some uh, some uh, some of the progress we've made on that front. Obviously, we're working in China. China's a little bit of a wild card right now with the whole coronavirus and the, the sort of disruption to the space. But we've got an active partner there, and we're both doing our work very effectively. It hasn't really affected our business yet, any any of that impact. And uh, so we're. we're 
working hard towards getting to a, some kind of a license deal, some kind of a commercial arrangement where they would use our technology in all of their expansion plans for their, uh, for their lithium iron uh, phosphate plants. Well, Dan, as always, it's a pleasure. Thank you for the update and congratulations on your recent news. Well, thank you very much.